Welcome to your third video in the Solving System of Equations unit. This video will be consisted of solving system of equations by using the elimination method. If you notice on the screen, there are four steps in order to solve a system of equation by elimination. The first step is you will always see you'll have two equations that you're going to be dealing with, and your goal for elimination is to add the equations so that one of the variables is going to drop out. There may be times where you need to multiply if necessary. Second step is to solve the equation. Third step is to substitute that value in, and then you're going to give your answer as an ordered pair. If you need to stop, pause this video at this time to write down the remaining steps. All right, now on to the first example. Okay, so you see that both of these equations are actually in standard form. Okay, when you were graphing, you were looking for y equals with both of these equations. When you were looking for substitution, you were looking for one of the equations to either have an x equals or a y equals to it. Now using elimination, we want to make sure that the x's are lined up on top of one another and the y's are lined up on top of one another. And if you look at your first step from the ones that you just wrote down, the step number one is to add the equation so that one of the variables drops out. So we want to put our plus sign in front of the second equation. And what we hopefully notice is that, that we add the x together, we're going to get a 5x. So those don't cancel out. But if we do add the y's together, a 4y and a negative 4y will cancel out. So then there are no more y's left in this equation once we add them together. And we still can't forget about the numbers after the equal sign. So 7 plus a 13 is our 20. So now by doing that first step, we've eliminated one of the variables. The y's are gone for right now. We're going to have them come back, but we want to finish solving this. Step number two is solve the equation. So we want to divide both sides by a 5. And when we do that to both sides, we wind up with an answer of an x equals a 4. Okay, so those are the first two steps. Our third step is to substitute. So now we want to take this x equals 4, and we want to plug that 4 into the first equation. So if we rewrite that 3 times 4, because that's what we know the quantity of x is actually equal to. And we rewrite the rest of it, because our goal now is to find what the y is. We already know that x is 4. Our answer is going to be an ordered pair. So let's solve this. 3 times 4 is your 12, plus your 4y is still equal to your 7. Now we're trying to get the y by itself, so we have to subtract 12 from both sides of the equation. We know that the 12s will cancel. We'll end up with a 4y that's equal to a negative 5. And last step, we divide both sides by a 4, and we wind up with an answer that is a y equal to a negative 5 over a 4. Okay, if you want to change that to a decimal, you most certainly can. But now, once we have these two variables, our last step is to write this as an ordered pair. Our x value is 4. Our y value is a negative 5 over 4. Notice how if we would have used a different method, especially like the graphing method, this would have been very difficult to come by because you had an answer that would have been a decimal. Okay, so number one, done. Now, on to the next one. The next one, we have 2x plus 3y is equal to a 1 and a 2x plus 4y is equal to a 2. Notice that we're trying to find either x's or y's that are the same number but opposite of one another. That's how something is going to cancel out. So if you look at the x's right now, we have a 2x and a positive 2x in both spots. So if we would add these together, nothing would cancel out. So this is where we need to multiply one of the equations by something. So what we want to do is to multiply the bottom equation by a negative 1. If we multiply this by a negative 1, let's write this right underneath it, we now have a negative 2x minus a 4y that's equal to a negative 2. And let's totally cross off that second equation because that equation does not mean anything to us anymore. And once we now add these two equations together, the one that we had originally and the one that we just made, we can say that a 2x plus the negative 2x is going to cancel out. We have a 3y plus a minus 4y is a negative 1y, and on the bottom, 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. Now, again, we're solving for the y's. We're trying to divide the negative 1 to both sides to cancel out the y, and we have a y equals a positive 1. So again, we did our first two steps. Now we need to take that y equals 1 and plug that back into the first equation. So we have a 2x 
plus a 3 times that 1 that we just found is equal to the 1. Our goal is to find the x value right now, so we know we have to multiply the parentheses together. 3 times 1 is 3, we still have equal to 1. Our goal is to get x by itself, so let's subtract 3 from both sides. And now we wind up with a 2x that's equal to a negative 2. Or when we divide by 2 to both sides of the equation, we wind up with an x that's equal to a negative 1. And again, we're not quite done. Answer has to be an ordered pair. So we wind up with a negative 1, 1 as our final answer for this ordered pair. Okay. Two different examples. You're going to see something a little bit different now with the third example. Okay. Your goal is to always try to pick out which two are the easiest to eliminate, the easiest to cancel out. If you look at the x's in this case, there is nothing that you can multiply by 2 to equal 5. So that would not be a good decision. You'd be doing more work if you had to try to cancel those out. So let's look at the y's. Right now you have a negative 1 in front of the first y, and on the bottom you have a positive 4y. So they're already opposites of one another. We just need to make them both a positive and a negative 4. So if we look at that first equation, let's multiply that first equation by a regular old 4. Because now when we multiply everything in that equation by 4, we wind up with a 8x minus 4y is equal to a 28. And let's rewrite the other equation right underneath it. So we have a 5x plus 4y is equal to an 11. And now, because we chose to multiply that first equation by a 4, when we add these two equations together, our y's will actually be the variable that cancels out right now, positive and negative 4. When we add together the rest of it, we end up with a 13x is equal to the 39. We divide both sides by 13, and now we wind up with an x that's equal to a 3 as our first variable. We found our first variable, now we need to find what our y is. We can use any equation that's on there. My recommendation would be to pick the one without any negatives so we don't lose any of those negatives. So let's take a look at the bottom equation that we have. We have a 5x, which we know that x is going to be actually a 3. Plus 4y is equal to an 11. 5 times the 3 is going to be our 15. Plus 4y is equal to 11. We know we have to get the y all by itself, so let's subtract 15 from both sides. And now we end up with a 4y equal to a negative 4. We divide both sides by a 4. And we wind up with a y that's equal to a negative 1. So our final answer, the ordered pair, the intersection of these two equations would be a 3, comma, negative 1. The last example that you're going to see is the hardest type of elimination question that we can throw at you. Because if you look at the x values, we cannot... Very similar to the last one, we cannot multiply 2 by anything to get the 5 and the 2 to cancel out. Same thing goes for the y's. So here you have an option. You can multiply and choose to get rid of either the x's or the y's. Our decision is going to be we're just going to get rid of the y's. So what number goes in to 2 and your 10, or 2 and 5, excuse me, we're going to try to get the x's to be a positive 10 and a negative 10. So what we need to multiply the first equation by is going to be a 5. So if we multiply everything in that first equation by 5, we wind up with a 10x plus 15y is equal to 5. And now with the second equation, we said 10 is our goal, but we need to make sure that these eliminate and they cancel out. So we actually need to make sure that this one is a negative 10 that we have. So we want to multiply the bottom by a negative 5. If we multiply the bottom by a negative 2, now we're going to wind up with a negative 10x minus 14y is equal to a negative 6. Notice how now when we add these two equations together, our x's will cancel out, and we wind up with a 15y plus negative 14y is a 1y equal to a negative 1. So really the only difference with this particular question now was that we had to multiply both of the equations by something to eliminate a variable. And again, you can choose the x's or the y's to eliminate first. But now that we found the y, we need to make sure we plug that back in. So let's just take the first equation. We wind up with a 2x plus 3. And then in place of the y, we're going to put that negative 1 is equal to a 1. 
We're solving for our x right now. So 2x minus 3 is equal to a 1. We add 3 to both sides to get rid of that from the same side as the x. We end up with a 2x is equal to a 4. Divide both sides by a 2. And we have our x is equal to 2. We write this answer as an ordered pair. 2, negative 1. And you have successfully done four, count them, four elimination questions, solving a system by elimination. Right? This is the last method, and now you can turn to your packet and do your practice.